Relax, I won't tell him. He's more in my life. You're like, like, like a thing, you know, you know. Don't tell him, don't tell him. Don't tell him, don't tell him. Don't tell him. I promise not to tell him. How much? 100 yen. Here this morning. We're on the third floor, but no sizing, no sizing, no sizing, no sizing, no sizing today. Sugi san's getting ready, she's washing her brushes and stuff. Okay. How is that for a tease to show? I didn't need to show Sugi-san. <laughs> Even Sugi-san no kao ni. Yes. It's coming. It's Fountains, fountains, fountains. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's been a fun, fun weekend, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Just the fun of my life, playing with the stuff yesterday. Out to the aquarium shop, out to the home center, just all over the place. We are playing with the design of our Chitty Tori machine. I've got some video for you, and we'll have a demonstration towards the end of this. I've got to do some work. I'm in trouble now, actually. It's the 21st, and the third group of subscription prints from this month are supposed to go out today. So I was supposed to do my chopping work yesterday and send them through the Takibin service over to Ome, but I got a lucky break. Today's a national holiday here in Japan. So there's no shipping. There's nothing leaving the post office today. So I have one day free. So I was able yesterday to muck around with the, you know, with the chiritori concept. But it means I have to do this work this morning. And then when I'm finished, I got to do my, I got to put my Cameron hat on, and do the the, the subscription billing. Cameron is is finished. He his last day was yesterday. And Ayano-san doesn't start till April, so for the next 10 days, I am an email man, a bookkeeper, uh, you name it. I'm, I'm a slave to my computer for the next 10 days, and longer, because Ayano-san's going to take quite a while to get, uh, to get up to speed. Long story short, I spent the weekend doing experiments on Chiritori. I do have some stuff to show you. We'll look at it a bit later. There's, there's a Rube Goldberg machine set up over there. If we look at it, we'll look at it. But first, I have to do some work. I also have some video, some background video of the work we did on the weekend, and also some video taken from Sawaki-san's workshop at Corso Yard. No, we learned a lot of stuff. We're, we're, it's the same thing I talked about the other day. It's the Edison thing, right? You make 9,999 mistakes, or not mistakes, but you, you try 9,999 things before you, you, bit by bit by bit, getting closer to what works. This didn't work at all, but we'll look at some water flowing and we'll talk about why. We'll do that around, I guess, Let's do it like we did the other stream. Let me do a bit of work here, maybe 45, 50 minutes work. Then somewhere before 9 o'clock or around 9 o'clock, an hour from now, we'll cut to the chase. I'll show you the machine. We'll play some video. And for the show and tell, I've got the, you know, I've got, I brought up the scroll. We can look at the end of the scroll, or maybe we'll just end up looking at too much video. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Not a happy accident. Carefully, you know, when all else is, <laughs> is removed. <laughs> Okay, I got to do some work, so try and keep me at this. This, of course, is the th subscription print for March. And Dave is the guy who gets tabbed with trimming them because it's also the perfect chance for me to check each and every one of these things as they go through. With the thousands, and I mean many thousands of prints that we will ship this year, checking has become a really an issue. So this is the way that we're going to end up doing it.
I'm not sure if that second camera has any meaning in whatever over there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about laminar flow without turbulence. So we're not at that stage yet. The the thing that my machine here this this is Mark Zero, the machine you're going to look at in a, in, a, in a few minutes here. This isn't even Mark One. This is Mark Zero because we still really don't know if the overall concept is viable. The idea of flow, will the COSO flow along tubes or a track? Can it be seen and can air be used to, to puff out bits and pieces of the, of the flow? This is sort of Mark Zero. If we do get a proof of concept, which we haven't yet, then we go ahead and we build Mark One. And Mark One will be also, it'll be a test machine but it'll be a test which will allow us to test the volume of water, the volume of air, the angle of the nozzle, all the million, million things that could be adjusted. There's no point in me building that machine yet, which will take a long, long time to build, if we don't know if the concept is gonna work. We'll talk about it more when I'm showing it to you. And at the moment, it doesn't. The balance between the flow of water and the flow of air, I wasn't able to find a balance between those two that would make me think this is going to work. problem here. This is why we're checking these. Can you see? There are people who wouldn't care about this, but there are also people who would care. We have a, a chidi, chidi and a white, it's not bark in the paper, it's a bit of white clump of fiber and it's meant that her pigment didn't go in. So what I've been doing with these, I've been checking each set of course, and on a previous set there was something wrong with one of the other prints. Hopefully it's one of the other ones. Yes, this one's okay, so I can switch out from the other set. And if all went perfectly, I would end up with a set here of six bad ones. And that's not how it's gonna work in practice, but whatever. I keep this in view. Have we already started with the puff of air? Yes, you're gonna see it in a few minutes. That's what I spent the weekend doing. We're going to see some puffing. And we're going to see cherry splash. <laughs> and we're going to see kozo splash. <laughs> I also wasted a ton of time yesterday. I got up in the morning, got my game plan, and I thought, no problem. I'll head to Yodobashi Camera in Akihabara first. And that place, I can get parts for an aquarium pump, and I can get parts for some air compressor and stuff like that. I went to Hildebashi Camera, hunted around the whole place. It's seven, eight floors of, of everything. They've got like everything under the sun up there. And I couldn't find it. I looked in the, the uh, hobbies and games section. Nope, no aquarium goods there. I went up to the living furniture section, living room stuff. Nope, no aquarium there. I then went to the electronics section, nothing there. And I finally asked the guy, where's, this, where's the aquariums? Where's the aquarium parts? He says, well, we don't do that. I think that's a world's first. I found something that Yodabashi doesn't do. It was crazy. So I wasted a whole, a whole trip down there. Am I on the scene here? I think I'm okay. Is it on camera? Could maybe be a bit more to the left here, I think. I 
I so John saying Spenny and I were browsing around you know, the Bashi, I wasn't browsing around, I was hunting, you know, whatever. It's quite the place, and it's incredible. <laughs> I was chatting with one of the clerks there more years and years ago, shortly after they opened. I'd been down there to buy a printer, and I was trying to decide between an Epson printer or a Canon printer for the big laser that we use for printing the stories. And I had been in there chatting with the salesman, who, you know, they're together. There's the Epson group and the Canon group, whatever. And the salesman actually had a tag on his shirt, and it didn't say Yodobashi. It said Epson. So I asked him about this. I said, yeah, I guess what, you, your, your printing company sends you here, right, instead of the Yodabashi people? And he said, yeah, we chat about it, and that's the way the whole building works. I hadn't realized this. That whole place, seven floors of stuff at Yodobashi, nothing in there, basically. I don't know, some small parts, whatever, I don't know, but all the big stuff, the printers, the TVs, the computers, the headphones, the keyboards, all, you know, all the stuff. None of it is owned by Yodobashi. It's all there by the, the makers. From the maker's point of view, Yodobashi is a display space. And they fill it with as much stuff as Yodobashi lets them do that. And they pay extra to get top shelf and bottom shelf and all this kind of stuff. So Yodobashi just builds the building, rents it, gets some staff ready. Other staff is supplied by Epson, by Canon, by all these people who are trying to sell their stuff. It's a really interesting business model. So it's all, it's all consignment. When I go there and buy a printer, I'm, not, I'm buying it from Yodobashi, but I give Yodobashi the cash, they turn around and they then buy that printer from Epson and away it goes to me. So they haven't invested a billion dollars in all that stuff. If something gets old, can't sell it, the maker just takes it back. Very interesting business model. <laughs> How many times did I hear the jingle? I don't even know. I don't even recognize it. If you asked me to sing it, I couldn't tell you. Do they do that? I know Big Camera used to do that. I guess they still do like crazy. I didn't even notice. She's looking for a bamboo skin in the stock we have there in the stock room. She's recovering a barren. In a minute, she'll come to the sink and moisten it. We'll hear her here. But she did that the other day. And she's been recovering barons every day this week. So I'm like, what's going on? And she's doing it. She, I, she's, this is the job she's done. And that doesn't need recovering a baron. But what she said just now is she's starting a special project in a few days, well, today. And she wanted to make sure all of her barons were in perfect tip-top condition. So she's, she's recovering. That would be fun to stream, you know. She, I wonder if she could do it here. She's got her own bench and her own setup. If the camera was more mobile, I could run in there and we could watch her. That's much more fun than chopping prints. We've got to do that for some future streams, you know. She's not so excited about the idea. It's okay. It's got It's got camera It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If I had known that's what she was doing this morning, we could have just set up in there. I could chat for a while. We could have watched her recovering it. That would have been a really good, you know. There will be chances. It's okay.
さんはキャメロンがいる間に撮ったんですかバレンツツームキャメロンがいる間に撮ったキャメロンで撮ってない予定だけですかそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうどうそうですね。質問がなぜ流し流ら、なぜおあのフロお風呂に入れて待ってて。ああ、う、う、うで、流るべくいいんですけど、なんか私が教わったのはあんまり表に水が入らないで内側からやるようにっていう感じですかね。
Why is she warming such a big piece? This is normal. This is not a big piece of bamboo. This is absolutely normal. But I'm going to use some centimeter bar. Yes, sir. ちょっと開いて手で押し上げてください。どれぐらいバラの大きさ。ああ、えっとね。バラ、ハヒラ、あの、竹の皮を。竹の皮を開いて。スプレッドアウト。バラはコンバラもどの場所に。ま、だいた
Yeah, yeah Goto-san, he's the, he's the master, he's the king. So Goto-san is the king there, absolutely. If Goto-san has a video online, you can watch that. He is the king. He's the number one guru, absolutely. Front of the camera here, sorry. The, the first thin slice, someone's asking Sonny about the first thin slice. It's because when I was laying out the master for this, I knew what I would want between these prints, between each one, so that's where the tape is, but that left the edge one a little bit too thin. It meant that the colors were a bit too close to the registration mark when they were printing, and it really was a bit troublesome for them. You know, she's got her spoon, she covers up the corner, but it is difficult, so I left a bit extra paper at the edge of the sheet, which has to be trimmed off to get them all reasonably the same size. If, you, if you're if you a subscriber to this and you get your prints, you'll notice they, they're not all exactly the same size. They're close, but I've got to trim off first. I'm doing this by eye. It's not lining up with anything. It's around half a millimeter. And now that should match half of this. Reasonably close, I think. They're not mathematically exact. They are, I think, acceptable in size. They might be, it might be 0.3 wider there. I mean, give me a break. What am I going to do? You know. When we see the older match labels, the ones in my collection, you've seen them any number of times on, on the stream here. They are all over the map, and some of them are so badly cut that it almost goes inside the picture sometimes. They must have just sliced them so roughly. Sometimes the prints were distributed to members in sheet form, and the members would cut them up themselves, and sometimes they were cut by the woodblock printmaking workshop. Yeah, Terry's, Terry too. Okay, Terry McKenna also. Good, 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 good. Someone's asking the list of things I'm supposed to talk about. No, it's downstairs. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's always stuff that I see when I'm reading the, the stream at lunchtime. I can never remember by the time the next stream comes around. I can hear it. She's got the thing now. She's got a flat piece of wood. She's got the, the skin on there. And she's rubbing with a black stone to stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, and to flatten it even more. And that's the really difficult part. Just rub it with a stone and stretch it, but without tearing it. of the modern guys don't use at all, don't use a stone. They use, uh, if you, you know the Japanese scissors, oh, this is a plastic pair of scissors, but you know the Japanese scissors like for Ikebana, they're made of iron steel with those big loops at the bottom. 
most of the printers these days, they grab the scissors with that loop at the bottom, and they do that across the back of the barrel with the scissors. Not so, I've almost never seen anybody use a black stone in a long, long, long time. And what is she using, just a sec? いや、だから、石川さん、金沢と思ったんですね。そうそうそう。あの、あゆみさんはハサミでしょ。あゆみさんはいつもハサミでしょ。あ、そうなの。え、本当。ここのさんのやり方でしょ。え、本当。かな。
Yeah, just checking the NHK website, it says 9.30, it says live in 55 minutes, it counts down. <coughs> it'll be live, it'll be live, it'll be broadcast five times today. And then after that, the day later or so, it goes on video on demand and it'll be there for one year. Is what she told me. But really this program, you know, this is no big deal. This is not a massive documentary. I get like five minutes in this program, that's all. You know. The program is about a puppet, puppet theater, mainly. And then the last five minutes, it's gonna cut to our workshop. So puppets get the priority today. She's still rubbing with her stone. It's been, what, five, 10 minutes? She rubs way more than I do. I'm, uh, there's another thing about this, you know, the more you rub it and the more you soften it and the more you thin it out, it prints with a really nice light touch, but also it wears out really quickly. You take away all the guts of that thing. I'm gonna ask her, this is such a long time. Excuse me, this is sec. If I bother her, she talks to talks to me. It gets dry. She's got a little damp rag, the same damp rag she was holding it in. She's doing it, wiping with a damp rag, doing it, wiping with a damp rag. It's very dry here today. It's 40. The uh, hygrometer shows 40. It's dry. So she's got to keep it moist as she's doing it. And so she says, yeah, get out of here. Get out. Her eyes say, just go away. <laughs> so, But I asked her, and she's, yes, that's the balance. But she said the one she's doing right now, she needs to rub. She, what she's doing, she's taking down, how can I describe it? You think of the outside of the bamboo skin here. It has vertical striations that are actually, you can feel them. And for us, when we're rubbing the paper at the back, it's not the striations of the barren skin that provide the printing action, it's the bumps inside. We would like something to be completely smooth. If bamboo grew with a completely smooth outside surface, we'd be happy campers. So she has to flatten it on this board, and she's rubbing mostly on the outside here, to the point where it kills those ridges on the outside. But yeah, the more you do it, the more you make it soft, the more you smash it up, the shorter lifespan it will have. She's 
a bit nervous about the job she's about to start. She made the paper wet the other day. It's all ready for her now. The pack of 60 sheets is there. She's studied the block. She's got advice. She's talked to me. She's talked around. As soon as she starts printing this morning, that door goes closed, and I do not even think about going in there to disturb her. She is starting this morning her first batch of Mokohankan Great Waves, and she is a little bit apprehensive about it because a bunch of people have done it before her. They've done a beautiful job. I know she can do this. Of course I know she can do this, but she's like, and if I want to go in there and watch, there's just no way, no way, no way, no way. You can actually see her working. We've seen her working. We had that last video, you know, the whole video I made of her working, the, the first print of this year. But there's no way I'm going to disturb her for a stream when she's doing a key block on a difficult print for the first time. Absolutely not. Chrysanthemums, Ishikawa-san is going to try it. The, the, the paper is not moistened yet. Ishikawa-san is working on the cormorant fishing right now. Then she's going to do the dragon, the fourth print. And after the dragon is done, then she will do her experimentation on the chrysanthemums. I am going to leave that lady alone. I will keep out of that room today. She doesn't need my help. She knows what to do. The last thing she wants is interruptions. And especially, there's an especial reason why I wouldn't interrupt her during the Great Wave, because the key block of our Great Wave is done on what's called muku, muku ita. It's a solid piece of cherry. It's not on plywood. So if I stop and talk and stops and talk and stops and talk, as you're printing, the block is growing and growing and growing in size. And it makes the color printing so much more difficult. So she's going to do her 60 sheets in as short a time as is physically possible and still do the job properly. No interruptions. If her phone rings, she's going to keep going. If there's another 6.5 earthquake, she is going to try and keep going. <laughs> It's the expansion of the block. Well, the reason I did it in the solid piece, we talked about that in the video series. That wasn't the plan. I had wood prepared in our normal way. It didn't work out. The piece that I had prepared turned out to not have any guts. I knew even back then that it was going to be a popular item for us, so I really wanted a hard piece of wood. But as I described in those videos, I started carving. I was, I was a few days into the job before I realized, no way, this is not going to be a long-lasting block. And at that point, there was no way to order something else and get it seasoned for a year and blah, 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 blah. <coughs> so I went to my storeroom, and I had a piece of wood that I had used for part of my poet series 20 years ago, and it was iron hard. And it was the best decision I made in my life because that print has been cooking for us now for more than 2,000 copies. But it's solid wood, so it has that downside that once you throw the water on and start printing, it says, Itadakimasu, and it drinks and drinks and drinks. And as you are printing copy 1, copy 10, copy 20, copy 30, that key block is actually s growing in width. It's the normal way. This is not a, this is a, a bug or a feature or whatever. That's what happens with traditional Japanese woodblock printmaking. So that's why you keep your stack of paper absolutely in the same order. They're not numbered on the back, one, two, three, four, but you keep them in that order. Because of any given print run like this, sheet number one and sheet number 60 are physically different dimensions when you do it on, on a natural block. Forty-four, how's our time here? Okay, for time.
Yes, when it dries out, of course it shrinks back down. Yes, exactly. And the problem with our great wave is because I did the color blocks on plywood and the key block is on a solid block, we have that discrepancy. And that's another reason why I limit the printers to 60 copies. Most traditional printers will want to work on more than 60 copies at the same time. With just 60, it's sort of not even worth getting the pigment mixed up. You just start and then you're finished and it's all over. They want to make more than 60. But for us, because of the expansion of that key block, I've limited it to 60. It also has the wonderful effect that the block doesn't really get soggy and soft. If you print 60, 100, 150, 200, the block is getting wetter and wetter and softer and softer, and it wears out much more. And I hadn't really realized that back at the beginning of the WAVE project, but that's another huge benefit to stopping at 60. The block stays hard, you dry it out for a month or so, and then make another batch. And that block is just running, it's going to be older than I am. So it actually it's a bit misleading. Based on our own experience with the Great Wave, we can make a statement, yes, with Japanese woodblock prints, key blocks last for 2,000 copies easily. That's not true in general. It's true if you chose an iron hard piece to start with, and if you only print 60 copies at a time, and if your printers really soften their brushes and if they only use pigment that is really, really carefully ground and has no roughness, then you can get 2,000 copies out of it. And that's certainly, none of those things were the case for most of the work in the old days. Yeah, so it's almost magnolia. More, no, 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 no. A couple of dozen. That's all you can get out of that. So it depends on what your goal is, to what you're trying to do. A couple of dozen copies. And then it gets soggy. The water and the paste go into it, and the surface gets full, and the colors get dull. Magnolia is wonderful, wonderful for printing short runs. You get beautiful wood grain, easy to print, and it cuts like butter. Carving it is like just chopping up a lump of butter. But if you're trying to make X hundred copies, no way, you're doomed, you're doomed. Speaking of Magnolia, I've got a picture to show you. Hang on a sec. See if you can watch the horn. the other day. It's a, it's a pictures of, it's a, it's a hunga collection of prints. <coughs> Nakajima. I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Nakajima. Tsuzen. Tsuzen. He's uh, older than me. I'm 70. He must be 75, 76, 77. He might actually even not be here anymore. I don't know. He uses whole wood almost exclusively, or he used whole almost exclusively. Let me just grab a couple of pictures here. Here's what you get with magnolia. And he wants the wood grain. He has printed it with thin pigment, very hard barn pressure, to try and bring out the wood grain. Very, very interesting work. I saw this the other day on Yahoo. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. <coughs> Classic, look at this. Can you see the grain? He has tried to bring out the wood grain on this. Very, very attractive work. Smooth, deep, beautiful, clean. 
and this is all on magnolia wood. To try and do this on sherry, it would be possible, but my God, it would be a little, it's difficult, difficult, difficult. Some of them, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is so cool, and these are big prints. This print is, one sec, this print is 43 centimeters wide. So this is like, uh, well, I don't know, 43 centimeters. This is a big print. And he really liked using the transparent water effect. Look at this. This is, if I could only have one of his prints. This also is very, very big. Big. These are beautiful. The guy's totally unknown. Here, look it up. Here's the book. Got it? Hey. And here's his name. It's Nakajimatsu Zen. Nakajimatsu Zen. Hangi. Ga shu. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Now, this, where did you find magnolia that big? This is ancient. These are these are these are a long time ago. Well, they're dated. Look at this one. This one's 1999. It says. Look at this. Look what he's done. Playing games like this. 1999. This is this is more than 20 years ago. Really, really cool stuff. Really, really cool stuff. Web page, yes, away you go. Must be a web page, good. Anyway, that's Magnolia. But because he's a modern artist, they must be limited edition, 20 of each or 30 of each or something, I have no idea. And also, I understand, and he does the designing himself and the carving himself, and he does or did the initial proof printing himself and then out they go to a pro for making the edition. And there's no, it doesn't say so, it's just got his own signature. So I feel a bit funny about people like that. If you're gonna, from my mind, if you're gonna use the craftsman, put their names on or show they've done it or whatever, the guys like that will just stand in the gallery, people will come in, oh I love your work, it's beautiful, such hard work, and the artist stands there and says yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the printers behind him are working. Don't get me started. I've already started. But stunning work. Absolutely stunning work. Beautiful. Video. Okay, yeah, almost video. Give me a couple more here. We're looking at 9.30 for finishing, scroll 10 minutes. All right, a couple more. Give me a couple more. Will. You wouldn't, you'd like the book, the show? I know it's, it's common here in Japan. We have two or three copies ourselves now, actually. <laughs> Whenever I see it cheap on the Yahoo auctions, I just pick up a copy. Because the, the printers, you know, the Sugizan, just take it home. She, she can have this copy. So. But it must be available at Amazon.com, I think. I've got no idea if there's anything still for sale, if he's still alive, if he's dead, if they have exhibitions. I don't know anything about it. The thing about those scenes that we saw, he did that for a number of years, and then he got religion. I don't know the details. He got religion. So at the back of the book here, Look at this. Where have we seen stuff like this before? Look at this. Hmm. He got religion and started making stuff like, uh, like this. So he stopped making landscapes and he started making prints of uh, Buddhist figures. And I think the, the book mentions his father is a temple person, I don't know, so he, he grew up in a temple, so. The book was published in blah, 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 1999, and there's your ISBN number.
Okay, let's, this is the last one. Let's move on. Let's just finish this one and move on. <coughs> okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is a video clip that I stole from the internet last night. I stole it from the website, from the YouTube channel of Sawaki-san. You've heard me talk about him before. We got some paper from him. He's a guy that sort of worked with us a few years ago with the idea that he would kind of make paper for our requirements. We bought a ton of paper from him. We tested it. We tried it. I talked back and forth with him. And we didn't go anywhere. And I, I was not able to tell him what I need in words. All we could do, we could explain why his paper wasn't working for us, and he wasn't willing to change his tradition. He works in the tradition of Mino paper making over in Gifu Prefecture. Most printmaking paper for like our requirements comes from Fukui Prefecture, and it's made in a different way, but we weren't able to communicate with each other or find a way to work together. But Long story short, we are now investigating how to take chidi out of paper. And in the last few streams, a ton of people have said, why not do this, why not do this, why not do this? Wonderful, valid suggestions. In order to show you why most of those suggestions are probably not going to work, I'm going to first show you now, I'm going to show you a clip taken from Sawaki-san's YouTube channel. Let me post a link to you. It's a long video. It's 57 minutes long, so it's nothing you're going to look at right now but I need to put this out there. He's got a 57 minute video of his paper making process and it is wonderful, wonderful. There's so much information here. It's, it's just wonderful. So I'm gonna post this in now. Go and check this out later and look at it. And right now we're gonna see, I think it's a four minute clip and this is taking the bark out in the traditional way. The traditional way. He's got a long video from day one to day two to day three. And did you see that? It says day six to 11. Six days to pull the chidi out of the bark for one batch of paper. How much did I pay for the book? Eight bucks, I think, 800 yen, I don't know. Now here's the deal, he's modernized this. They're not crouched over the stream. They're sitting at a comfortable bench. The water has been piped into their workshop. And this is the fiber after boiling, but before pounding. After boiling, before pounding. They have simplified this. They are sitting there comfortably. In one of son's workshop, they are crouched, leaning forward, head over the river. These guys have simplified it a little bit. And you can see what's going on here. This is the fiber. It's been boiled. It is now soft. But before pounding. The other day, you saw me boil it and then pound it straight away because we're going to try and do this chili removal under water. He's got a beautiful video. I cannot recommend this highly enough. After you finished here, Get, get a cup of coffee, sit down and watch this video. It's glorious, absolutely glorious. And what he's done with this video, we're gonna see it in a minute, and we're gonna get a close up in a minute in slow motion to see what's going on. There's something else here. This young boy is doing this. He's left handed and he is picking and scooping into his hand. When I was trying this last time I was up in one of some place, I picked and placed, picked and placed. And one of some wife just laughed at me and she showed me, look, you pick it with your fingers and tuck it under your hand. Yeah, this has been now one strand. Look at the back side, look at the front side, toss it around, look at it again, toss it around, look at it again. And out it goes onto the pile. It's 
start another string. Every single string. There's the pile. How long do you think that's going to take? They spent six days on this for this single batch of paper. And we're not going to get any second. We're going to get a close up in slow motion. Just hang on a second. about the chilling paper. And this is what they have been doing day after day after day. Remember I told you a story last week. We went to the door because I complained about chilling. He says, you tell them to work harder. I couldn't do that. There's the stuff left behind after X minutes of work. This is not a bit tumbling because that, that's full of bits and bits of bark left behind. And start the next piece, one after the other, one after the other. And then we can go. And it's all got to be done underwater. Let's fade out here now. There you go. This is the before, after boiling, before pulling chitty. This is the man on the left has finished going through one pass, and then the man on the right has finished. Everything goes through at least two passes. Two people do this. And they saw that. It said day 11. They spent, what was it? Day 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the heart of the problem here. And that's the way it's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. I told you before, at some point the government did try. They invested money. The culture ministry sent money and teams and engineers and whatever. And nobody could come up with a system that would do that. So what we are trying to do here is this. Here's the machine. here at the same time. I'll get rid of this. I just meant. So I've got two aquariums. I went to the home center yesterday morning, the aquarium center. Yodabashi didn't have them. So what we're doing is this. There's a top tank, which is the input. This is the fiber. This is the fiber after pounding. It is now separated. It doesn't look like what you just saw in that video. The fiber is now separated. It goes in the top tank. Look at this. I told you before about sticking the show. This is how it sticks. You dip something in there and it comes up coated with this stuff. The idea that you could dip into this tank and pick and place and pick the fiber sticks to everything that goes in there. It's hard to get them out there. So top tank is full of the dispersed fiber. <laughs> we have, this is all a test. This is not a machine. This is simply a mark zero, a proof of concept here. The idea is this. After we open the floodgate here, the fiber comes down through a hose I'm not at this point trying to identify chitty. There's no camera here, there's nothing. We're just simply trying to get the flow worked out. It flows down the pipe, comes off the end, and the next step is... We have a can of compressed air. I haven't bought a compressor yet. We're just testing this. I have a can of compressed air with an outlet. Yesterday I was placing this, during experiments, I placed this below the stream. 
And again, at this point, I don't care about Chidi. We're just simply testing the puff idea. I'm not trying to catch Chidi. There's no camera here. <laughs> green tape, green tape. We also have for a test, we have a catch screen. It's, I stole it from the back of the gas heater in the printer's room. Don't tell them, because they can't use the heater right now. It's okay. So the idea, the flow comes down, the thing, the, the waterfall comes, and the air behind it. Okay, I took some video yesterday. Let's see how this plays. <laughs> the video, check your, let me know about the volume. Too loud, too soft, whatever. This is the playback from yesterday afternoon. <coughs> There's the tank. I've got a little piece of plastic that acts as a, a door. And there's the top tank. You just saw it in real life. This is yesterday. In goes some, absolutely in the production machine, the top tank will need vibration. This stuff has to stay dispersed, obviously. If this thing sits still, the, the fibers stick to the tank, they would stick to the tube. There has to be constant motion. The top tank will need vibration or sticks or something to keep it in motion. And the tube, the thing has to keep flowing. If you turned it off overnight and left it in there, the stuff would stick like crazy. You've just got to keep it moving. I, I had known Kozo was adhesive, but I didn't have any idea just how adhesive it was. It was It's incredible stuff. It just sticks to everything. Maybe shake the top, maybe ultrasonic, maybe manual vibration. I don't know. We'll talk about that kind of detail later. So here's the setup yesterday afternoon, just the one you just saw right now. I've got a pump in there. You can see a pump in the back because I don't want to keep bucketing the water. So when I've done one test, I pump the water back up to the top and there's a mesh. The, the fiber is falling into the right-hand side of the bottom tank. The pump is in the left-hand side. Okay, here was the first test yesterday. Okay, David at that point says, let's pause this. David at that point says, oh, ho, 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 ho. Clearly now, there was too much water coming through for the amount of spray that I've got. The water is overwhelmingly stronger than the puffer. So either I need to get a stronger puff here or a different kind of puff jet, or I've got to reduce the water. I don't have any way at this point yesterday to get bigger puffs. So what I did was, I went, you'll see it in a minute, shut this. I went up to the top of the tank here, and I adjusted the outlet. Was there one more chance to see this? I'm not sure. What are we doing here? Oh, that, that's the end of that one. Okay. So, so what I did was, I then went up to the top, and I put some tape on the top to try and reduce the flow going through, which it did. It reduced the flow very nicely. go. It's a bit not so stable flow, but it's reduced to some percentage of what it was before. This is better now. It actually interrupts. You can see that this still isn't right, but it, it just it didn't jet a clump of coals right. It just simply destroys the flow and sprays it all over the whole room. So. So, uh, what I've done, I mean, what we haven't seen here, I had prepared, let me put this back up. One sec. We are, we've got like different nozzles. We haven't yet started. We're gonna get wider nozzles for the air. We're gonna try a wider, the plume of water coming out needs to be maybe wider and flatter. There's lots and lots of things to test here. You're, I see suggestions coming in. The air's too close, the air's too strong, the air's too weak, whatever. This is Mark Zero just to see if the thing might work. 
And if it looks like it might work, we then go to Mark 1, which does. Mark 1 has a control of how much water to go. Mark 1 will be how wide, how thin, how flat to make the stream, what angle of the stream coming down. We're going to build a little machine where we can change and test all these things. That's Mark 1. So lots of good suggestions. I get it. But this was simply to see, is it possible to blow the mulberry out with a piece of water? That's all we're trying to do here this afternoon with this. Let's pick it up where I just paused it there. So next step, I tried to reduce even further the flow just to see if I could get the flow cut down even further. I put a little funnel in there that's got a little wider, uh, a little narrower nozzle. And it is a bit better. I ended up actually with bits of mulberry up on the, sc up on the screen there, but still, it's clear. Uh, a round flow of water with one little tiny jet is not the way to go here. There's no question about that. But as I said, simply just mark one, or mark, mark zero. The reason I tried to do it with a round, where's my, where's my camera here? The reason I tried to do it with a round flow of water is this. If we have a flow of water that comes, it's narrow and wide, then I need to have my jet to be able to shoot different parts of it. If the chidi comes down at the left-hand side of this thing, we need to shoot at the left-hand side. So we will then need either a nozzle that can aim and fire, or we need a nozzle that is wider that can take out the whole wide stream of water. So that will probably be the next one we try. I don't have time now for the next few days to do this because I am now, as I say, Cameron is gone and all of a sudden I'm doing my own work plus Cameron's work plus the trimming plus the sizing plus everything. So I am really not going to have too much time to play with this over the next few days. But yes, John Scott here, multiple nozzles, solenoids, computer. Yes, that's Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, whatever. <laughs> so that was the point of this one, to see what do we think we need in the future for this. So Anyway, there it is. That's how it's going. Should I try it now? It doesn't work. This is, I, I've taken the, uh, no, I've taken the, here, I'll show you. This, this is back to the way it was at the beginning, before we uh, put the, before we put the, uh, So of course, this is way too much water here. But this doesn't do anything. But it flows, and, oh, gotta keep it moving. That's going to be our problem. As soon as you let it sit for a minute, away you go, it clumps up. It clumps up, absolutely it clumps up. So that's gonna be the key thing. How much to do the dispersion. I'm really worried. I would like to get this into a narrower track, but as soon as we get narrow, boy oh boy oh boy, uh, the, how much that kozo is gonna flow through here, I don't know, I really don't know. So this is far from, uh, it's far from clear that this is actually going to be a thing, the problem of blowing that thing to keep the coastal moving and yet being able to pump out what you want a bit of a time. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, there you go. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, let's uh, clean up a little bit here. Let's get back to Chantal. How are we going to do this? I 
I think causal and water sticks to, and see some of the questions here, causal sticks to anything, clearly. It's the stickiest stuff I have ever seen in my life. Absolutely sticky. Okay, where are we here? How are we gonna do this? Try to move the camera, one sec. Hey, we can actually get a view here. Look at this. Good, 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 good. Let's unroll part of this that we've seen. Where were we? Oh, that's this way. Where were we? I don't remember where we were. That might have been last time. Let's see if we can zoom in. We're getting a better view than we had the other day. It's good. I have no idea if we can finish this today or not. I have no idea. There's that much left, but it could still be quite long. I don't really know. It doesn't matter. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm still buzzed here. It's been a fun, 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 fun weekend. Fun weekend. I, okay, let's move along here. If I stop, then I'll, let's just roll. Let's roll, as the man says. Let's roll. <laughs> okay. Minimum of talk, minimum of looking. Look at this, another calligraphy style. This is kind of like a style where the Chinese, they carve on seals. It's like steel carving, or we see this on a stele, S-T-E-L-E, stone, stone monuments are carved with characters in this style. I have no idea what the name is, I'm sorry. This is a masterclass in styles of calligraphy, this book. Absolutely, absolutely. Looks sort of tropical. Whoa, look at this. This is classic Hokusai. Classic. Look at this, I like this. Do you see the guy there? I mentioned a steel, and there's one in the next picture. Look at that, interesting. Classic Hokusai Mountains. Well, they're very much based on Chinese style, too. This roll is getting harder and harder to control. So many classic Hokusai figures. If you've seen the Hokusai manga, so many of his drawings are reproduced here. He just, he just draws the people again and again and again.
I can tell you nothing about the Chinese stories that are being depicted here, I'm sorry. I hear Suga-san mixing pigment. She must have finished with her baron. Look at this, this one, look at this one is nice. Look at the wind. This one, I enjoy this one too. Look at this, there's lots of content here. Beautiful, beautiful. the wind you know what I mean you know what I mean this paper is so thin I mean you can see what's going on here right this gumpy paper, it's astonishing, astonishingly thin. Look at this. I guess there's a horse in there. I can't quite f figure out where it is. I'm not quite sure. There's the tail. We're getting there. We're This one I think is not so successful. Look at those faces. It, we really need to be able to compare Hokusai's original and the one this guy has made. And uh, that's not a Hokusai face at all, whether that's something that was in Hokusai's original or whether this man who has copied it here has just had not quite the same amount of brush dexterity. I don't know. Without the Hokusai original to compare side by side, but it, I think to me the, the earlier part of the book we had dates telling us when this man had made these and I haven't seen that recently these later ones don't have the date not that I can read anyway in anything there's no apparent dates here and he was dating the earlier ones another Hokusai horse head turned back the legs are very unnatural 
This looks like, remember we saw that kabuki horse that was actually two guys standing on stage with their legs straight down? That's what we're seeing here almost. This looks like a kabuki acting horse. This is nothing to write home about. Says Dave, like he could actually do this, <laughs> not. <laughs> Yep, I'm watching the time, John. Thank you. I'm on here. I'm going to sign off at 9.30 exactly here. I'm watching. Someone says, you hope it's been done by a female artist. Because I keep saying this guy, oh, come on, give me a break here. I know, I might. <laughs> There's a reflection of the time here. The person who did this would have absolutely been somebody educated in the Chinese classics. They had a very high level of training in calligraphy. The, in that, and in the era we're talking about, this is the you know, late Meiji era, in the era we were talking about, such knowledge is really only, only boys and men were given this. Ladies were expected to write in hiragana syllabary. They weren't studying Chinese poetry. This was something that was the province of men, and this is not any decision I made here. So when I keep saying the guy who did this, I'm just reflecting back on the fact that it's 99.99% certain that it was uh, a man. The ladies would not have been given the chance to, to study those things. Another horse. This is, a, we're getting a real dictionary of horses today, absolutely. Oop, it's getting tight now. I wonder, how, when's it been since this thing was last opened? I don't know. Let's boogie along. We have got to get to the end here. Whoa, that's one fierce fish. Look at this. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs> okay, and we are going to end with nothing. No name, no mark, no date, no nothing. Here's the end of our scroll. No information on who or when this was all put together. There we have it. <laughs> if that's a letdown, I'm sorry. I myself didn't know I'm seeing this for the first time. <laughs> Let's leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Remember, this isn't an actual scroll, as in something that was published as a scroll. This is just a bunch of pictures that somebody has taped together, that's all. They may not even have been taped together by the guy who painted them. He may have painted them and left them just in a stack somewhere, he's dead, somebody gets it and pastes them all together. We have no idea about the provenance of this. Anyway. Anyway, 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 I think somebody put the link to the NHK program in here. I'm now going to sign off. I'm going to watch the program. It's not NHK broadcast. It's NHK World on the Internet. Anybody can watch it. If you miss it now, if you want to go to bed, you can watch it on five times during the day. That page has the schedules. And it'll be on video on demand probably 24 hours from now. I'm not quite sure. One day later. Okay. I'm out of it. I am now putting on my Cameron hat, or whatever it is we're going to call it here at Mokohankan from now on. I got some work to do. I got some emails to answer, and it's going to be a day in front of the computer for me. Thanks very much, and I'll keep in touch with the experiments as they move forward. And I will very much, very much read happily all the comments about what we're doing here. Thanks very much, and bye for now.